Hi guys, nice to see you again. My name is Said Fardino Omar and you are watching In Reality with me as usual. First segment's with me, second and third segment you'll be with that girl. Yep, you'll be with Lina. Now, picture this, coming to work, being all comfortable, being surrounded by colours, being surrounded by people who are awesome and cool and a work environment that is equally awesome and cool. What does that give you? productivity and creativity. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm here in Mind Valley, and to tell us a little bit more or a lot more about this wonderful space, we have uh, the CEO and founder of Mind Valley himself, Mr. Vishen Lakiani. Vishen, thank you so much Hi. for joining us. Wait, thanks for having me. Um, I want to work here. So where do I <laughs> where do I sign up? Look, this looks like an awesome place to work mm -hmm. uh, in. So, you know, before we go any further with how, you know, talking about the space, tell us a little bit about the business. Okay, well, Mind Valley is, is I guess the best way you can say it is, <coughs> it's an incubator. Mm -hmm. We started out as a publishing company. I, I'm Malaysian. I used to teach meditation classes in New York, and my background is computer engineering. Mm -hmm. I was trying to find a way to get people into my classes, built a website, it became ridiculously popular, sold out. And before I knew it, other people in the publishing industry who were selling personal growth, health and wellness products asked me to help them. Uh, we evolved into a publishing company. We became amazingly successful. Mm -hmm. And then we moved back to Malaysia after I had um, visa issues in the US. <laughs> so you we and moved back me, to mate. Malaysia, we set up Mind Valley. Uh, but what happened was when we came back to Malaysia, we instantly had a problem, right? See, Malaysia has massive brain drain. Yep. Uh, I think something like 1% of the population leave every year. Mm -hmm. So that was one issue. The second issue is all our partners, our founders were, were in America, um, our clients. How could we <coughs> function in Malaysia and still serve our market in the US? So for the first two years, I was basically working from Starbucks. And right. then finally, as the company grew and I decided I had to hire, um, Rather than worry about brain, day, brain drain, I decided to focus on a different goal. Mm -hmm. Rather than worry about the brain drain, instead we decided to, um, we were going to create the world's greatest workplace. So that became our goal, it became our mission. Okay. I decided that we're going to build the world's greatest workplace. It's not going to be in London, not going to be in Silicon Valley, it's going to be right here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And if we could do this, if we could pull this off, we'd be able to attract talent from all around the world. Yep. Brain drain wouldn't be an issue. And we'd also be able to get so much talent from the US that having customers over there and being able to, to, to um, build an American company in Malaysia yep. would not be an issue either. After it took us five years to get the formula right, mm -hmm. but I believe we're there right now. Mind Valley is one of the hottest places in the world to work. We get applicants from all around the world. Right now, in this office here in Kuala Lumpur, we have people who are born in 31 different countries. That's wow. out of a team of 80. So yeah. it's one of the most diverse workspaces in the world. And over the last five years, being in the publishing industry, I got to meet a lot of amazing individuals from the likes of Tony Robbins to Sir Richard Branson. And I like to study people and understand what makes them tick. And over time, I started reverse engineering these individuals. I mean, right. imagine reverse engineering Richard Branson. I actually tried to do that. I spent four days with him on his private island in, in, in the Caribbean. And these learnings I infused into Mind Valley. As a result, Mind Valley Publishing became extremely successful, mm -hmm. generated a lot of cash, and then we put this cash into Mind Valley Ventures. And now we're expanding in so many different directions. We are launching a fashion company, we have a film company, we've launched a technology incubator, mm -hmm. uh, we've expanded around the world. Um, we, in, in the last 12 months alone, we have expanded into Italy, Poland, Russia. We opened up an office in Argentina. We're now opening up an office in Costa Rica and soon somewhere in California. And Mind Valley has just exploded through this model that we've developed. Well, connectivity allows you to create the most awesome workplace right. in the world, uh, right here in Kuala Lumpur. But it's interesting that you said that what you wanted to do was create the most awesome workplace. Um, I'm, I'm getting the feeling that you know the, the product or, or rather the industry comes second to actually creating a workplace which is brilliant. So what motivates this? Well, you know, what's the, what's the cash? Uh, well, see, you're right. You're completely right. And I'm glad you picked it up. I don't care what industry I'm okay. in. I don't care if Mind Valley was a fashion company or a technology company, or if we um, built, made, sold flip flops yep. um, or sell publishing. What I care about is the actual art of entrepreneurial activity itself, okay. mm -hmm. and then leveraging this art to do something epic for the planet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as it happens right now, Mind Valley makes most of its revenue through publishing. We are slowly moving to technology, but that is not the point. What we are really trying to do 
is create an entire Silicon Valley ecosystem right here in Malaysia. Right. First thing we're looking to do is end brain drain in 10 years. Okay. Second thing we're looking to do is literally build the entire ecosystem to make Malaysia competitive on the world stage. I want Malaysia to be the world's next hot entrepreneurial hub. Right. And this country has lots of cool qualities which we aren't seeing because we live here, but that's really attractive to other people. For yep. example, to get talent here in Malaysia, the way we, we first advertised the opportunity <laughs> was come work for Mind Valley and we'll give you a free trip to Bali. <laughs> that was it. That attracted a ton of applicants from the U.S. Now, of course, we go beyond that. If you go to our job website, mindvalley.com careers, firstly, it's one of the most beautiful career pages you'll see anywhere uh -huh. on the net. But we actually advertise Malaysia. We talk about the fact that you can wake up at 6 a.m. here in KL and be in a paradise island by noon. That's amazing. Yep. People around the world create that type yep. of thing. And with the internet, you can build an American company right here without having to be in a boring place yep. such as, you know, Silicon Valley. Yeah. Frankly, I, I find it a little bit dull. I, I lived yeah. there for about a year. But I like the climate here. I like the weather. I like the culture. I like the adventure. Yeah. I love the islands. What we're looking to do is leverage this. I call it geo advantages. Leverage these to attract talent here. Yeah. That's rule number one. Now, the second thing we're looking to do is if we're going to go that far, why not set a really powerful goal? And the goal is build the world's single greatest workplace. Yeah. I'm not talking about the best workplace in Malaysia. We are probably already there. Mm -hmm. Not talking about the best place, workplace in Asia. I'm talking about the world's single greatest workplace. If we can pull this off, there is no reason Malaysians would want to leave the country. Right. Imagine the mind shift this would put in young Malaysians who now dream yeah. about getting jobs in Hong Kong or Singapore or New York. They, they want to come see, and work here. Yes, that there's not just here, but if they can see that there's talent from all around the world who come to Malaysia, it opens up their mind to new possibilities. Yeah. So Mind Valley alumni, people who have worked here in Mind Valley, have gone on to start a whole string of successful Malaysian companies. Um, Says.com, amazing culture, amazing company, ex Mind Valley person. <laughs> Groupon Malaysia, ex Mind yeah. Valley person. There's a um, SlimYogi.com, ex Mind Valley person. There are tons of amazing companies growing, emerging in Malaysia right now from people who have worked in Mind Valley. Now, okay. Uh, so you've created, you know, it's interesting, you know, picking up from your example, um, you said that you come and work in Mind Valley and we'll send you off for a trip in Bali. But now looking at the space mm -hmm. that you have, you just need to put a picture uh, of the office and right. say, you want to work here? I think that would right. work because equally back, as well. Back when we had to advertise the trip to Bali, what we didn't tell people is our office was in a warehouse in Churras. <laughs> okay, so, well, so well, with we, this space that you have far. right now, it looks very, very nice right. indeed. Um, but tell us, you know, having a space like this and looking at the kind of uh, direction that you're going with the company, what does this sort of space with the colours and the creativity thrown all over liberally, what does that do to your staff? Okay, so earlier I mentioned the line, reverse engineering Richard Branson. Correct, yeah. Okay, that's the clue to what we are trying to do. Um, basically, I've been looking at what makes entrepreneurs great. I read autobiographies like crazy, almost one a week. Uh, and through my own experiments, I, I believe I've identified that philosophy, that model that makes certain entrepreneurs successful and, and others not. Mm -hmm. um, we, I call it the theory of peak states. Now, the, it basically says this, and I've noticed this in my own life. Um, there's a certain state of existence as a human being where it almost feels as if everything you touch turns to gold. Opportunities, synchronicities, coincidences just open up to you. The right people walk into your life, the right opportunities fall in your lap. And things just magically work. Um, it's almost as if the universe has your back. Now I know I'm getting metaphysical, but, but bear with me for a second. Now this state comes from two qualities and just two qualities. People try to overcomplicate it, but it really just boils down to two things. Number one, having really bold visions and aspirations. And these visions and aspirations are not <coughs> selfish, they are selfless. It's about doing something good for the planet. Bold visions, bold aspirations. Okay. Changing the planet, massive stuff. The second ingredient though is what many people forget. It's about being happy in the now. Having being in a certain level of happiness where right. you, you're relaxed, you're enjoying life. It's about the journey, not the destination. You almost expect your goals to manifest, your visions to come forth. And therefore, you don't tolerate stress. Um, so, based on these two ingredients, an entrepreneur can be in any one of four states. Mm -hmm. No happiness, no vision, depressed. That's bad. Seek psychological help. Yeah. Or you can be happy in the now, but no vision. Now, some people may say, well, what's fine if I'm just happy? Well, the problem with that is that if you're just happy, uh, but you have no vision of what you want to shake up in the world, who you want to be, 
then I believe you aren't really living your life potential. Yeah. Tony Robbins, who's another person whom I, I, I studied a lot and spent some time with, said that deep down inside, we all have two great spiritual needs, the need to grow and the need to contribute. Yeah. If you're just happy in the now, but have no vision, you aren't growing, you aren't contributing. Yeah. Now that brings us to the third stage, which is where 90% of entrepreneurs are in. No happiness in the now, but aspiration and vision. vision yeah. So they're constantly worried about hitting that next sales target, getting that next big client, um, hitting their goals. But they are completely stressed out, tired, uh, frustrated, um, whiny. And I meet entrepreneurs like this all the time. I stay away from them. They are not in flow. Now, when you get flow, when you learn to detach your happiness from your goals, but still have big goals, yeah. you operate at a whole different level. Yeah. So I started putting in practices into my life, into my philosophy, into the company to put me and my entire team in flow. Mm -hmm. Flow is more important than productivity. Um, it's about this unique state that we're in. Flow, some, I sometimes call it a um, state of creative congruence, I call it a, a peak state. Mm -hmm. A state that comprises just two things, epic visions for the future, but in a, a degree of emotional control where you're able to control your happiness levels and keep yourself joyful, having fun and happy right now. Being in control. Right. Yeah. So, you know, in, in being happy in the now, so clearly we uh -huh. see the importance of having a space like this because it contributes to being happy in the right. now. Okay, but we're out of time right now. Uh, in the next segment, uh, Lena will take you around and she will tell you and show you some of the things that make, I, I would uh -huh. assume, the staff here being happy in the now. Uh, being here in Mind Valley. So for now, thank you so much for spending time thank with you. me. That has been very motivational and very inspirational. Goosebumps. <laughs> uh, so that's it from me in the first segment. In the second and third segment, be sure to stay tuned because Lena is going to take you around this wonderful office. Uh, and maybe you can try and pick up some tips of how to make your own places be happy so that you are happy in the now. So all you need to do is focus on the big stuff. All right, stay with us on Inrealty.